Hi everybody and welcome to this video on writing an essay and um, this is part of a longer series of videos and I would really recommend for this one that you watch the previous video which is on nominalization because I'm going to rely on you having watched that and understood it and had a practice before you have a go at this one which is on analytical verbs. So let's then, firstly, what are analytical verbs? Well, these are the verbs that we use in our analysis to dig deeper into the writer's choices and their intentions. So the one that you will be most familiar with that you'll have used all the way through secondary school is presents. You might also have used suggests, emphasizes, develops, criticizes, and these are all absolutely fine. However, if we're thinking about levelling up, we might use that process of nominalisation to transform these into nouns. So presents becomes presentation of, suggest becomes the suggestion that and so on. And that's in the middle column there. There's obviously some alternatives to this if you're thinking about varying your vocabulary. You don't want to be repeating the same sentence starters or the same phrases all the time. And that's listed there in the third column. So I would suggest that if you're preparing for your exams, you take a screenshot or a picture of this and you work this into your revision, maybe making some flashcards um, with presents on the front and the alternatives on the back or suggests on the front and the alternatives on the back so that you can learn these words and use them in their essays. You'll see that in the third column, I put the noun form in brackets, just in case you do want to use that process of nominalization. Now, you might be thinking, what is the point of having all of these verbs and how would I actually use them in an essay? Well, these verbs really help you to build your argument as long as you're selecting which one you use really carefully. So, for example, presents is quite an assertive verb, isn't it? You know, the writer definitely unequivocally 100% presents the character as this. However, in contrast to that, suggests and reveals, evokes, connotes, implies are a bit more tentative. So the writer suggests that Othello is this, but however, Othello might be that instead. So we've got a more tentative verb, whereas going down to emphasises, that is a very assertive verb. Develops is about building. So, for example, the character of Desdemona um, at the start of Othello has a kind of inbuilt vulnerability, which develops throughout the play until she becomes completely vulnerable at the end. So you can use those verbs to really reflect some nuance in how the characters develop or change or shift across the play criticizes is very much about the writer's intentions. So their comments on the big ideas, the key concepts that they're writing about. You might use this if you're doing this social political protest um, spec on AQA, and you might say, you know, that the writer is critiquing um, capitalism or the writer is critiquing uh, the patriarchy or something like that. So that's really helping you to look out at those big ideas, those key concepts. Okay, so about how we're going to use these. I've got some examples on the screen here. So if we just look at that first row, Shakespeare presents Othello as noble. Okay, well I've said that word presents is quite assertive, so the first thing I need to think about is whether I want my verb to be assertive or whether something like suggest would be more appropriate. So I'm thinking through my evidence, I'm thinking about the start of the play, and I'm sure that Shakespeare is presenting Othello as quite noble at the start, so I'm going to stick with that assertive verb. However, instead of saying presents, I might want to make it even more assertive. So I'm going to say emphasises. So Shakespeare emphasises Othello's nobility. So that's how I get to that one in the middle. And then if I wanted to use nominalisation, I'd say Shakespeare's emphasis on Othello's nobility suggests whatever. OK, next row down. So Ibsen presents Nora as increasingly strong. Again, quite an assertive verb choice there. Um, so I need to consider whether I'm 100 percent sure about this. Does he present Nora as being increasingly strong as we go through a doll's house? Um, I am happy with that. So I'm going to stay with presents. However, one of the things that I'm talking about in my essay is her character development um, as she moves towards leaving the house at the end of the play. So I'm going to use develop. So Ibsen develops our sense of Nora's growing strength by. To use nominalisation for this would end up being really awkward and it would just be overthinking it. So I'm just going to leave that one. Next one down then. So Hesini presents Asaf as extremist. Thinking about the kite runner here. So again, I'm 100% sure about this. I want to use something assertive. But what I also want to do is maybe be even stronger and link out to the key concept in the novel, which is a critique of that extremism and showing the damage that extremism can do. 
So I'm going to use the verb critique. So Hassini critiques Assef's extremism. If I wanted to use nominalization using the noun form, I'd say Hassini's critique of Assef focuses on his extremism. OK, last one then, thinking about Keats um, and a beautiful, beautiful poem called La Belle Dame Sans Merci. Um, so Keats presents the Belle Dame as the victim rather than the villain. So that first column, again, I've gone for an assertive verb. If I really think about it in that particular poem, it's quite ambiguous as to whether Keats does present the Belle Dame as being the victim or the villain. Um, you can argue it both ways. So instead of using that really assertive verb, I'm going to use quite a tentative one. So Keats suggests that the Belle Dame is the victim. Or I could use nominalization and I could say Keats's suggestion that. OK, so set of examples. Now let's zoom in a little bit more um, on that Belle Dame example. Um, and I want us to think about the other adjectives or um, adverbs that we could be adding in. So let's just read through them first. So Keats suggests that the Belle Dame is the victim rather than the villain. Keats clearly suggests that the Belle Dame is the victim rather than the villain. Keats's ambiguous presentation of the Belle Dame suggests that she's the victim rather than the villain. OK, so what I want you to do is pause the video and make a decision for yourself. Which of those three statements um, do you think is the most accurate? If you don't do Keats, I'm really sorry. Maybe skip on about 30 seconds to the next slide. OK, so which one you like the most is really going to depend on your argument. So as I've said previously, if we're arguing that this is ambiguous, that you could argue either way, we could say Keats suggests. So number one would be appropriate, right? Number two, Keats clearly suggests. Now, I've got a problem with this one. I think this one doesn't work. And that's because the adverb clearly does not match up with my choice of verb suggests. If something's clearly, it's obvious, right? But suggests is quite tentative. There's other possibilities there. So I wouldn't put those two together. So when you're picking your adverbs or your adjectives to qualify your verb, make sure that you're picking ones that match with the meaning that you're trying to communicate. Then number three, Keita's ambiguous presentation. Um, I quite like that use of the word ambiguous. Um, however, does the tentativeness of ambiguous match the assertiveness of presentation? Um, that, that itself is probably a little bit ambiguous, so it probably works. Um, but you might want to use something instead of presentation um, that's a little bit more tentative here. Um, so Keita's ambiguous um, portrayal of the Belle Dame or something like that. OK, so all of those <laughs> suggestions are different. And what I want you to be doing when you're working on this is really thinking through which ones are going to be the most appropriate for your argument and for what you are trying to say. OK, if we're adding on these adverbs and adjectives, then here's a, a little example of how else we might do it. And I've just put four examples in here. Um, so in the first row, he, you know, Shakespeare unequivocally emphasises Othello's nobility. So on the previous slide, I was talking about making sure that your adverb matches the meaning of your verb. Unequivocally means absolutely 100%. It's very assertive. So is the word emphasises and unequivocally, unequivocally just gives that a little bit more strength, a little bit more power. So I'm going to put that in there. If I was to put this with the noun form in the third column, I'd say Shakespeare's unequivocal emphasis on. Um, in the kite runner row, so the third row down, Hassini unquestionably presents Asaf as extremist. Again, I want to make my verb choice a bit more punchy, um, give it a bit more power, a bit more strength behind it. So that word unquestionably does work in there. Or in the final column, I said Hassini's powerful critique, which works as well. So just thinking through your choice of um, verbs or your choice of adverbs and adjectives, sure they match. OK, to summarise then, think about which analytical verb is the most appropriate. So do you want to be tentative or do you want to be assertive? How does that verb help you to build your argument? You know, where are you going with this? What is it that you're trying to say? Then think about do you want to use an analytical verb or nominalization? Nominalization doesn't always work. It can sometimes seem a little bit awkward. However, it can be really useful because it helps you to um, give you writing a more academic tone, but it also helps to launch a deeper level of analysis, which we talked about in the previous video. So make sure you've watched it. Last one there, is it appropriate to use an adjective or an adverb to add clarity to this? Not always appropriate. Don't overdo this, please. But sometimes it can be useful.
OK, this is over to you now. I've put some suggestions um, for sentences in the left hand column. Now, I'm aware that this might not be the topic that you're revising. It might be on a topic that you've not studied. So if you're doing different texts, think about what would your typical sentence be? You know, um, Shakespeare presents King Lear as um, Shakespeare presents Romeo as, you know, pick your, your author, your main character and think, right, Shakespeare presents that character as whatever. That'll give you what's in the first column. Then think about the next two. So how you could level up your verbs, how you could, might, might be able to use nominalization. And there's a box in the center for what you're thinking might be. Everyone's going to come up with something different for this particular activity. So I'm not going to show you any answers. But what I am going to say is practice does make perfect. Um, so please take the time to practice this. And then next time you're writing an essay, think about how you could work that in. OK, thanks very much, everyone. And I hope you watch the rest of the videos in this series and there will be another another video out soon.